Hi, welcome back to my um, tutorial dedicated to the time code. So this is part two. In this part, I will show you how to create um, uh, an event-based uh, time code where basically every time you will be raising a fader, flashing, press go, etc., etc., you will be actually recording the time code that show. Some people prefer that method to the to to the one that I've described in the first video tutorial, but um, I would always I would always recommend you if you landed on this tutorial first and you haven't seen the first part it's a longer one, longest one but still I would always recommend to go there and check it out because I also explain some of the settings and the the logic of working and editing Q stack um, and editing the uh, Q stack when it's when it comes when it relates to the time code so this is the second method of recording uh, based on the um, on events. And we call it MQ track or like Magic Q track. So uh, again, this is uh, this is uh, a valid method for the for the current uh, software version. So I'm running 1830 alpha. And if you're watching this video tutorial, say in uh, later on in a couple of years time, and we already have uh, we added something else, so just you can use this one probably as a reference. Okay, so um, yeah, let's go with the second method. So in the first video tutorial I have created a Q stack a Q, uh, a ta um, a Q stack based time code where when you raise a playback that internal time code starts and then the all the st uh, and the Q stack goes through the steps of the um, uh, of uh, of our Q stack in the timely manner so this is the first one but in some cases of course when you're running the whole time code that show uh, time code show in a lot of cases you might be using say some bumps like a playbacks where you need to flash them on the top of the time code show because there's certain things it will take you like longer to create some flashes some blinders in like during during the main song uh, you don't want to create let's say if you want to if you want to flash five times quickly you don't want to actually create um, five separate steps with a separate timings etc etc it's much easier to actually use something as I said we call as an MQ track and this is how you do it let's say when I'll run my Q stack at certain points I would like to press the buttons and flash my cues uh, along with the music and I want my uh, the, the I want this to be recorded as also as a part of my time coded show. For this, we have an option here inside of the Q stack. It's called if you press View Time Code or View TC, you have an option here called tr Record Track. So how to do this? So basically, you do it this way. So when you activate the time coded Q stack and the Q stack starts, at least you can start it with one empty step. For the for the time code to start with because it needs to have the the starting point and after that you can start recording a track. We'll do this by by using some of the functions here. So okay, I'm gonna raise my Q stack and I press record track. Now if I do click click flash flash, you can see it's recorded the flash. I can raise my chase and I even press go 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 go. I can put it back and I can do multiple things. I can add another circle. And and let's say when I'm finished, I press end record. So now let's see what I have created. So if I press shift release, so I've released all the cues and I raise my cue stack again. You can see here it goes through the step here, but at the same time inside of the view time code, it actually repeats all the actions that I did while uh, the cue stack was playing. So it basically recorded all the steps that I needed along with my Q stack. So that way, as you can see, it records all the actions for me and what I did, I did a flash, flash, etc. Uh, leveled something down and leveled something down as well. Again, I didn't kill in the end two, two playbacks, but you can kill them after that. But the main thing I wanted to show you is how to actually, how it actually records the MQ track. So 
again we can just release and clear it okay so you can see what you see in the view uh, in the uh, in the MQ track you can see the step number so I've got 35 steps you can see also the time the timestamp this is when the action happened and then it tells you what it is it's a type it's actually a playback so if you double click you cannot change anything here then you've got an item and it tells you so the item is the playback number one uh, page number one playback number one and what I did is the action is actually flash and it tells you you have a two separate parameters here and this is how it indicates for you the either the step number or it tells you the um, uh, the the level you've set and the second parameter here indicates for you the time it took for the action to happen so what it means is it always measures how long you've been pressing and all like pressing and holding button before you you release the action so that way you can actually see your steps here it says playback da 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 you can see the actions could be flash let me see I press the flash button you, you can have the level option so that means when you raise the fader and you have a go buttons as well so that means this is the action when I scrolled through the through the steps again this is really useful tool and I've used it several times myself and I use them for like a, as addition to the uh, to the first recording method of the Q stack based uh, timecode so in this case you also can of course scroll uh, window you also if you're using external time code simulation you will have this option uh, switched on you can use the display current queue on is already on and then the one thing you can do is as well so each queue stack can have up to 10 tracks what it means is for example for one of the tracks that you're using with your queue stack you actually can use let's say bumps relates to the uh, let's say they are related to um, some generics so in the next uh, in the next track that goes along you can actually have uh, say uh, any other playbacks relates to another type of fixture and so on and so forth so you can have up to 10 tracks that you uh, that runs along with the Q stack at any point if you're not happy with the track you can always either remove it if you want to insert in track meaning uh, when you do this it will switch on like a editing mode so what it means is if you rerun your Q stack and then you'll press the action buttons you will, it will be able to fit the the new actions in between the actions you have already created Again, it's really nice function. Some people um, people prefer to use that way. Some people prefer to use the QStack way. I prefer to combine that uh, when QStack based and also the action based menu here. So these actions currently only support the actions coming from your playbacks. That means if you ac uh, uh, um, if you run it from your playbacks here or if you run it from your wings that's connected to your console it will trigger all those actions in the future we will expand the what else you can run with this but for time being just just know that you can run it from the playbacks you can change the pages as you wish but you still need to run from your physical playbacks uh, rather than let's say like an execute window or anywhere else again i hope that was useful for you Thank you very much. Stay tuned and uh, I'm, I'm going to bring the next one is going to be the, the third method of recording that is based on the Reaper file. Thank you.